Barely four months ago, he was still a stalwart of the Liberal Party, an officer of what was then the ruling party. Today, he heads a House committee that has pinned down one of his former party mates in the belibid drug trade. Where is this probe by the House Justice Committee heading and how far up will it go? Good evening, I'm Tony Abad and this is Political Capital. With us tonight, Mindoro Oriental Representative and House Justice Committee Chair, Reynaldo Umali. Boss Ray, thank you for joining us again. I remember the last time you were here, you were uh, a representative of the Liberal Party. And I think we were talking about party politics. Yeah. How to, how to improve uh, parties, no? But, uh, well, you have left, and let me start by asking, why did you leave the LP? Uh, for so many reasons, uh, one of which is that, you know, uh, I come from San Beda College, and uh, okay. the president comes also from, or came from San Beda College, and uh, my friends, uh, all of them who are now uh, secretaries uh, of different departments, including the executive secretary, are all my peers. So uh, it was kind of uh, difficult uh, to... Uh, that's, that's a good, I think that's a good enough reason. San Beda is now a political party <laughs> <laughs> in power. No, it's really uh, the, the, uh, the re my relationship with uh, all of them that made it difficult for me to uh, stick it out with the Liberal Party because, you know, they were inviting me and uh, yeah. so uh, I couldn't move because, uh, um, you know, I was, uh, I, was in a, I, I was in a bind, you know. Okay. Uh, I am liberal, I am opposition, and yet uh, all of my friends are uh, also there uh, waiting for me. So, uh, yeah. you, you were I deputy spokesman back then. Yes. That's right. And then your, I understand your brother is still with the Liberal Party. Yes, he's a treasurer he's the of treasurer. Uh, the Liberal Party. Okay. How does that affect uh, brotherly love? Well, uh, <laughs> not, not, uh, not so much. Uh, you know, I'm really my own man, and uh, in like manner, my brother is uh, his own man. Okay. Well, let's talk about another former party mate, uh, so-called, uh, <laughs> or the now very famous uh, Senator Laila de Lima. What were your impressions of, of uh, well, then Secretary de Lima when, when you were still with the Liberal Party? Yeah, but before that, uh, it's not only my uh, former party mate. Uh, she's my uh, sister in her sorority. Okay. And uh, she also comes from uh, San Beda. She came from San Beda, I mean. And uh, she's my uh, kumare because uh, I'm the godfather to, he, to her okay. eldest son. So she's like... Family, actually. Yeah, it's uh, like that, but... Uh, Sister you know, and a kumari, but... <laughs> in this uh, particular case, uh, you know, it's duty first. Uh, I am uh, chairman of the Justice Committee, and I have a job to do, and so uh, there is a resolution that was filed, which was uh, referred to me, mm -hmm. uh, and so I had, I have to, uh, to do it. just uh, hear the, the, the uh, resolution. Most especially because it was authored by no less than the speaker and the House uh, Majority Floor Leader. Okay. Now, your probe, your, your, your uh, investigation, um, is it in, in aid of legislation? That's correct. Okay. Now, it is not actually targeting or singling out any individual, right? It is looking into the beleaguered prison drug trade. That is correct. That's okay. why uh, uh, what we are really investigating and uh, the department which is uh, really uh, under scrutiny here is the Department of Justice. That's why Vit Aguirre, uh, Secretary Aguirre, was uh, called in and uh, we needed to ask him, how did this happen? Okay. Why did this happen? And uh, what have you done uh, to somehow uh, correct situations if, uh, in fact, there were uh, some problems uh, into it? And that is what we are trying to establish. Okay. Now, based on your initial impressions of testimony, is there reason to believe that Senator De Lima, former Secretary of Justice, was involved in that drug trade? 
Uh, that's uh, jumping the gun. Uh, <laughs> what we're trying to uh, establish is uh, uh, what was uh, covered by the House of Resolution. It's the proliferation of drug syndicates in the New Believed Prison. Now, uh, what have we established? We called in uh, seven witnesses who are all inmates. And uh, mm -hmm. they were one in saying that, uh, yes, uh, there are a lot of syndicates inside. Uh, yes. Uh, they talked about, uh, I think, Colango, uh, talking about eight uh, groups under him. And then there is this uh, uh, so-called J.B. Sebastian group uh, of mm -hmm. about uh, four groups. So are these uh, uh, syndicates? Yes, I think. Beyond the Department of Justice, how high up do you think it went in the previous administration? I guess uh, it's uh, it's there. No, uh, mm -hmm. it's uh, only up to that level. Uh, this exists or this existed uh, for uh, a long time, and I think uh, somehow uh, uh, there was uh, uh, established already some kind of a a, a trade within that mm -hmm. uh, that uh, worsened uh, through the years. So. Worst case is, or you know, uh, short of, of any proof otherwise, there seems to have been some sort of uh, benign neglect at, at worst, no? Yes. Or, or even, at best, that there was really uh, some involvement no, from the very top. Do you think there was some involvement from, from Malacanang at that time? Huh? Uh, I couldn't say that uh, at this point in time uh, because uh, what was uh, testified on really uh, was uh, more of uh, the Department of Justice. Mm -hmm. It just so happened that uh, Senator De Lima was uh, the uh, secretary at the time that all of these things happened. Of course, this existed even before. As you said, I would like to think that this is a result of a long neglect of uh, the correctional system that we had in mm -hmm. this country. And hopefully, Things are now going to change, no? Um, but before we go to break, uh, I just I was just curious, no? Um, because you know you spend some time with with uh, a political party. These are your colleagues, your your friends also. Do you feel some pressure coming from the your former colleagues at the Liberal Party, you know, uh, as you're proceeding with this investigation? Not at all, uh, not at all, because. Uh, you know, in the party, I guess, uh, we're more issue-related, uh, yes. not personal personalities. Uh, I think uh, no one will question uh, the need for reforms in the correctional system of government. You know, nobody would question the need for reforms in the criminal justice system. Yes. And uh, in these uh, four uh, pillars of the criminal justice system, namely uh, investigation yes. and enforcement prosecutorial reforms, judicial reforms, and now correctional reforms. So uh, this is really our object in pursuing this uh, legislative inquiry. Okay, good. Well, when we come back, uh, let's talk about the House probe itself. Stay with us. You're still with Political Capital. This is Tony Abad, together with our guest, House Justice Committee Chairman Reynaldo Umali. Okay, Congressman Umali, let's now talk about the House probe itself. You already said that it is in aid of legislation. Uh, what legislation are we looking at? Well, uh, two things. Uh, can be legislation, can be new, can be uh, just uh, an, amendment an amendment to existing. Yeah. But there are also other things that we can do as part of... Uh, uh, congressional oversight and uh, during the hearing in fact uh, we already mentioned some of the things that perhaps the Department of Justice and or Bucor and or uh, National Believed yes. Prison can do and what are these like uh, for example conduct a drug test on many of these inmates and uh, if they are found to be positive <coughs> then uh, isolate them and then uh, put all the necessary uh, measures that will prohibit entry of uh, like for example cell phones because uh, you can mm -hmm. they are able to somehow import cell phones inside and this is what is uh, 
used for purposes of drug trade outside the Bilibid prison. Uh, so far, have you found that certain persons should be charged as a result of your investigation? That is not our, uh, our objective. Uh, objective. Uh, that is not even our mandate. Ours is uh, in aid of legislation. But uh, things have uh, come out in the open, and I think uh, when you think of uh, probable cause, just for purposes of filing, I guess uh, uh, Department of Justice know their wares and uh, would know what to do. So uh, yeah, at the end of the day, they really are the ones yeah. uh, who will, uh, which will uh, file the necessary charges. How much longer do you think these hearings are going to last? To my mind, I am trying to uh, define the issues, define the facts that need to be established. Uh, my committee and uh, my vice chairs are uh, working on it uh, as we speak. And so uh, we're just looking at uh, some other uh, points that we need to uh, uh, establish. And then probably in about two to three hearings, uh, we would have uh, accomplished uh, our mission. Okay. Now, the committee has been criticized for recommending immunity for witnesses. Uh, how, did you, how did you respond to that? Well, you see, uh, uh, this is really something that is within uh, our uh, power as Congress because uh, we want to arrive at truth. And sometimes uh, truth is uh, hard to come by because of the unwillingness of the witnesses yes. uh, to, uh, to uh, provide us uh, that information. And so it, this facilitates everything, you know. Like, uh, but this is prospective. This is not like uh, they will get, uh, they can get uh, themselves uh, freed from uh, uh, the past convictions that they have uh, okay. gotten. It's just really that that. Uh, we need to establish uh, some, some uh, facts that uh, are necessary for us to be able to carry out our jobs. Okay, the other thing I think the committee was questioned about or criticized about was um, permitting or having uh, Secretary Aguirre, um, Justice Secretary, actually sort of lead the questioning. No? In this particular case, uh, our rules do not uh, disallow that. Mm -hmm. There is no rule that prohibits uh, uh, the secretary from uh, conducting the direct examination. So uh, since there is no prohibition, then it is allowed. Well, and even uh, on another point, the, the first day we allowed him, the second day we, he just introduced the uh, documents and then uh, we, we tweaked our rules and uh, we asked the uh, witnesses to just read into the records uh, their... Uh, their uh, affidavits, the contents of uh, their affidavits. So, and I think uh, this was even more clear uh, to us, uh, uh, members of the uh, Committee on Justice, and even to the public, the viewing public. So, you know, we are adjusting as we go along, but right. I guess uh, uh, the, the bottom line is that I guess this is really the way to conduct a congressional inquiry if you want to really... Uh, go to the bottom of it. Well, I was saying perhaps you can never just, you cannot never satisfy everybody. That is correct, yes. Yeah. Now, before we go to another break, um, of course, there's this question about the independence of your committee. You know, mm -hmm. um, that, mm. that you're mm. actually, you know, working on behalf of Malacanang to single out uh, certain personalities. Well, I guess uh, <clears throat> that is unfair because uh, you will be the judge to do to this. Uh, I guess the people will be the judge on mm -hmm. how fair uh, we had been, how uh, orderly the conduct was, uh, and uh, how we were trying to really uh, bring out uh, all of the issues. Expectedly, because it was uh, Department of Justice uh, Secretary uh, Vit Aguirre or Boy Aguirre yes. who was presenting then, he will really uh, show his, uh, you know, best case. But that is just part of the uh, inquiry. As I said, what the, we are inquiring on the acts of uh, the Department of Justice, and we are just about to uh, do our jobs uh, and uh, so that uh, we ended up 11 hours in the first day, 12, okay. uh, uh, sorry, 10 hours in the second day because there were 
probably about uh, almost 50 who interpolated, and that is uh, the kind of... Uh, it's a marathon. Yeah, it's a <laughs> marathon. And, uh, you know, we gave everyone, uh, all parties, their opportunity to cross or to interpolate so that uh, we can really bring out the truth. We did not stop anyone from asking questions. Uh, so uh, uh, how can they say that, uh, you know, we were doing this yeah. uh, just... Uh, 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 or this was uh, some kind of uh, scripted or something, you know. It's it's not. It's uh, w it's uh, way beyond that. Uh, we're doing our jobs uh, uh, in the best possible way to be fair to everyone. When we come back, how do we see the house probe ending? Stay with us. Welcome back. You're still with Political Capital. So, Congressman Umali, how do you think this investigation will end? Well, uh, we need uh, to uh, still present uh, some more uh, witnesses. We need to hear them uh, so that uh, we can uh, have a balanced uh, inquiry. Like uh, in the next hearing, uh, uh, we're looking at uh, J.B. Sebastian, we're looking at uh, Jonel Sanchez, I think, uh, mm -hmm. if, uh, if I recall the name correctly. Uh, and another one, Diane. Uh, hopefully, uh, we can uh, get hold of him. If not, uh, we will have him arrested mm -hmm. uh, so that uh, he can, uh, you know, uh, say his piece also towards uh, clarifying all of the issues that are hounding uh, Department of Justice, the Bucor, and the Bilibid Prison. And, uh, uh, to a certain extent, of course, uh, Senator Laila de Lima. So uh, these are the things that we need so that uh, we really can uh, have a uh, fair conduct of this uh, inquiry. Yeah. How are things uh, going at the Bilibid prison as, as, as far as you know? Things have changed. Uh, uh, the SAF, uh, Special Action Force of the mm -hmm. PNP, numbering about 200, I think, were uh, deployed uh, to... Uh, New Bilibid Prison, and uh, in their presentation during our first hearing, uh, uh, things have changed a lot. No more cobalt. Uh, so they've, uh, yeah. they've inst instilled discipline. Yes, and day. even uh, even those uh, inmates are now uh, doing exercises uh, every morning, and then uh, all wearing uh, the same clothes like you know this orange thing that the yeah, prisoners yeah, right. uh, would normally wear. And, uh, you know, uh, there is more order and discipline inside. I heard yes. uh, from uh, the testimony or the report of uh, the SAF that uh, probably about 90% of uh, all of these things that are happening uh, had been stopped. But on a uh, longer term basis, uh, what we are trying to look at, and this is how we reorganized the, the, the uh, Committee on Justice now, uh, we have restructured our subcommittees to cover four of the five pillars of the criminal justice system. You cannot just uh, reform one aspect of the criminal justice. You have to reform all if we are to uh, achieve uh, what we want to achieve in, uh, in, uh, in this inquiry. Now, you were quoted uh, prior to the, the probe as uh, saying that uh, you also wanted uh, legis uh, an investigation in aid of legislation towards the restoration of the death penalty. Is that correct? No, no. Uh, this is a bill file that we will hear. Okay. Uh, and uh, uh, as I said, uh, we have empowered the subcommittees to already conduct the hearing because uh, if that will have to wait until I finish this and yeah. then I will move one by one on this, we will never finish. So what I did was a death penalty, penalty bill. We referred to the subcommittee on uh, judicial reform and uh, have uh, directed the COMSEC to already conduct the necessary hearing so that in the first uh, uh, regular session of uh, the 17th Congress, we would have finished uh, all of the 150 uh, bills that are pending with us, okay. uh, referred to us uh, by the rule. bills. Huh? Yes. Okay. 
But um, are you, uh, I mean, what's your stand on, on death penalty? At this point in time, I'm open to it. Uh, I have uh, nothing against it because uh, there can be no justice. Like uh, if all of these uh, reforms are not put in place, then uh, I guess uh, death penalty uh, should be there. Okay. But if we are able to really tighten and reform all of these uh, institutions, uh, involved in the criminal justice system, perhaps death penalty may not be necessary. So at this point in time, it will all depend on how government will uh, will uh, reform uh, the different uh, agencies of government involved in the criminal justice okay. system. So you may not necessarily push for it, but you will mm -hmm. deliberate on it. We will deliberate on it. Uh, we will uh, go for it simultaneously and then... Uh, you know, try different uh, ways by which we can really uh, uh, instill uh, fear in the minds of the criminals. Uh, I guess uh, this is uh, uh, what uh, we seek to accomplish in the Committee on Justice. Because that means that right as of now, all killing is extrajudicial. Yes. <laughs> because there's no death penalty. Yes. Yes. Okay, before we, before we end, uh, I wanted to ask you about the age of criminal responsibility. You have a position towards uh, lowering that age and proposed legislation. I have not really uh, uh, dig deeper on uh, on uh, this uh, uh, lowering of juvenile age. Yes. Again, what we did was uh, uh, there is a bill filed. I think uh, so many bills filed on mm -hmm. this. Uh, I have uh, delegated that uh, and referred that to the subcommittee on... Uh, if I'm not mistaken, prosecutorial reform. Okay. So uh, we have uh, we have also requested the chairman of the subcommittee on electoral reforms. I have five vice chairmen, and all of them were given this uh, special task. So uh, we can uh, conduct this hearing simultaneously, as I said. So uh, uh, one uh, subcommittee, uh, I think this is the uh, subcommittee on prosecutorial reforms yes. that will now conduct hearings on this. Now, in that issue of this, um, I'm just curious about this, this issue about the criminal age. No? Uh, how does that tie in with the juvenile justice law no? that was uh, actually proposed by a former party mate, uh, mm -hmm. Senator Pangilinan? Yeah, I guess uh, that will be uh, the, the, the main item that will be tackled there. Uh, I think it will be a... Uh, an amendment to that, uh, if at all, uh, if yes. uh, the uh, subcommittee will deem fit uh, that, uh, you know, we lower, uh, right. we, this is lowered. But uh, then again, these subcommittees will uh, just be recommendatory. We will have a mother committee that will now um, consolidate all of these uh, reform measures that uh, uh, will happen in these uh, four aspects of the criminal justice system and come up hopefully with the best law on criminal okay. justice system that this country will ever have. Well, Congressman Umali, yeah, looks like uh, you have a lot of work ahead of you. I'm sure. Uh, this hearing that we're, talk that we're discussing uh, this evening is only a small part, it seems. Yes. 150 bills, all of the subcommittee topics and issues that have to be tackled and the entire criminal, criminal justice, justice system, system that yeah. has to be actually reform and overhaul. Yeah. No? So I wish you luck. Thank you, thank <laughs> you. Uh, I need that. Yes. <laughs> it's only the second week of the House probe into the Bilibid drug trade, and yet justice officials have promised even more explosive evidence against Senator De Lima. In the end, the credibility of both the witnesses and of the investigation itself will hinge on the independence shown by the committee's leadership and how it deals with the bigger picture of reforming our criminal justice system. This is Tony Abad for Political Capital. Thank you, and we'll see you again next week.